It's a beautiful Monday morning right here. Thank you for joining us. It's time for us to go through the papers. We call it Off the Press. Okunabong Kataria joins the conversation via phone. Okunabong, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Good morning, all right, open up. Let's start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. It talks about economic crisis. Nigeria's nine trillion naira oil revenue threatened, and federal government blames theft. Of course, oil production crashes by over 28 million barrels, and government mis, uh, misuses revenue target or misses revenue target. Cob oil theft caught recurrent expenditure to avoid bankruptcy. Expert tells the federal government, 18 terminal operators owe federal government $753 million, 1.61 billion naira, according to the Attorney General of the Federation. Now, Rep summons the NPA boss. Sounds like, I mean, there's a lot of money that's just, we're losing or money that's just somewhere that we're not getting. Okay. And that's it on the banner caption. Seven month cashless transaction raise 41%, heat 210 uh, trillion naira. And a query Madu Ohanese faults Malami and six federal government intervention. I thought we said that, you know, the federal government, we had an agreement that the federal government will stay off. Caution your supporters, please warn presidential candidate and others. And 27 killed in 28 political incident in seven months. Again, just before we move away, Lagos Ibadan, construction, convention, ground, traffic, and please ban hawking. Monkeypox spreads to 27 state and cases now 172. Amor Su's political relevance, validity have expired, APC spokesman is saying. And this talks about raid bushes on completed buildings, IG orders. Please, men, the headlines on the Punch newspaper this morning. Let's go straight to the nation. We have uh, some interesting headlines there. Uh, not too many of those, but uh, the few headlines there are interesting. IG raises alarm over plot to attack public facilities. Uh, DCO abducted in Abia and gunmen invade school, kill teacher in Nassau. We have a picture of the IGP in a court uh, there, which says Nigerians are hereby urged to cooperate with the police as Many operatives will be seen at strategic areas, routes, and communities in order to suppress the antics and criminal activities of men of the underworld. Uh, seems a renewed push by the police in the light of recent security breaches around the country. Southeast South South Youth begin mobilization for Tinubu Fiori, Fiori over a Muslim Muslim ticket unnecessary. So that headline says. Uh, Anger and APC over non-refund of nomination fees. Um, so it may be a case of uh, uh, eating your cake and having it. I don't know what uh, guests uh, listed this morning would, will say about that. Customs intercepts 234 tons of fertilizer at Nigeria Cameroon border. Uh, Mercy, I don't know if this is the border we know <laughs> that you know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, kidnap Kingpin Wadume. Others get seven years jail term ondo edo three others record 13 new cases of lassa fever ohanese federal government should wade into query madu's case is what the uh, socio cultural uh, pan Igbo social culture group is said to be saying 18 terminal operators owe federal government 753 million dollars 1.61 billion naira and uh, final two from the nation, why vote buying is increasing and uh, foreign airlines fair currency devaluation. The headlines on the front page of the nation. Away from the nation, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. 140 days after federal government loses three billion naira on halted Kaduna Abuja train service. I closed my shop, laid off staff. Uh, you have uh, that as an entrepreneur who's quoted to say, clear terrorist cells to ease resumption, security expert. 
how disruption will affect loan repayment. It's a lot. Now, in total loss in 140 days, 3.02 billion naira is lost. That's, that, that's what you find this morning on the daily trust as the number of daily trips is eight. Now, number of passengers per trip is 900 to 1,000. An economic ticket is 2,800 and 3,000 naira. And VIP ticket is sold at 6,000 naira. But I remember sometime, you know, there's an impression also where it feels like this, you know, there's no revenue that's really generated here. It's actually not so lucrative if you look at it. And that's why salaries are being owed and all of the delays. But, I mean, it's surprising to, to see that this amount has been lost in 140 days. It feels like there's a lot of money right there. APC Muslim Muslim ticket, shunt sentiment and vote quality leaders. Ido Ufiasen is quoted. And 50 killed, many displaced as flawed wrecks havoc in Jigawa. Many terrorists killed in Niger and Kaduna airstrike. And uh, just before we move away from that, you find total loss in the last four months since train services were suspended is 600 million naira monthly. Kofi, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. At the time where we constantly say that uh, we don't have uh, resources, it's a lot to be losing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um but I think uh, uh, the, the Daily Trust uh, group must be commended for putting something like this together. Uh, seems like the, the headlines from some papers, sometimes on some days you see they go a bit different from the normal, from the grain, which is good to see. Let's move on to The Guardian. Um, conscience nurtured by truth, they say. Uh, they lead with this headline. Only six out of 54 auto assembly plants running uh, below capacity. Only six out of 54 auto assembly plants running below capacity uh, is what they're saying. So it's not that they're running below. They are running. Only six are running, but they are also below capacity. There's a comma there. Um, the writer to that headline, stakeholders list Forex inconsistent policies as challenges. We have since converted our staff in assembly plans to after sales, says C CFAO. Uh, DMD. So the, the, even the six that are running are running below capacity, is what the, uh, the Guardian is saying. As parents drag APC over refund of nomination fees as party expels Umahi's opponent, or opponent uh, says um, troops rescue another Chibok girl, three others in Borno. That's some good news there. Uh, return EX creates uh, 77 wraps of cocaine at Enugu Airport. Uh, and uh, no, no Mark Marburg virus disease outbreak in Nigeria. NCDC confirms this area of a Marburg virus disease. It's another one for the books. Stop prolonged audits. Inaugurate NDDC board. Unionists tell Buhari and flood kills 50. It displaces 100 in hundreds in Jiga. Sad one there. So headlines come on the front page of The Guardian. And at this point, we will bring in our guest uh, this morning, Oponabo and Gotaria. Uh, Mr. Gotaria, thank you for your time once again. Uh, I'd like to start with this one on the front page of The Guardian, where aspirants of the All Progressives Congress are um, dragging the party over the refund of their nomination fees. It's a story that also the nation uh, went with as well. Um, is this something that is normal in, in the politics of Nigeria, that after the primaries hold and the losers would ask for a refund of their nomination fees? Well, uh, the refund of the nomination fees, uh, it's not of the process. Uh, the the where the pay for the form and uh, if you lose out or if you are told you don't participate in the primary, they are fighting the report. There is no such law. If at all there will be a report, it has to do with the party policy. I know that Mr. President has ordered that uh, they do reform to involve all those that actually did not participate in the primary of for chief form. But this call for reinforcement is a decision by the sense of injustice. In all the political parties, candidates were imposed 
this candidate they appointed on the Oigo party. And so a lot of people are riled up. They are angry. That if you know that you're going to expose the candidate on the party, then why allow us to protect from? And uh, they, 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 they come to a purchase at very exorbitant rates, you know, quite statutory. And it's not something that you would just want to dismiss unless the money was stolen. Even if the money you use in protecting the funds was stolen, it is very difficult to just criticize the way like that. I mean, it's difficult. What if you imagine what you can do with those funds? It is better you go and say than to be denied. That is why a lot of them are calling for a reform because of the injustice that played out. It's like trying to disrupt party members. I mean, it's more or less like a scam. All right, open a bank attire. Let, let's take a look at you know the economic situation of Nigeria and, and as uh, you know the punch tax and he talks about economic crisis. Now Nigeria's oil production slumped by 28 million barrels between January and July 2022, and that's a big threat to the federal government's uh, 9.3 trillion naira oil and gas revenue target by the end of 2022. Now the government is blaming that on oil debt. Uh, not also forgetting the fact that we haven't really been able to meet our quota. We're talking about, you know, the quota that's been made uh, or allocated to Nigeria by OPEC over time. Uh, how do you respond to this? Well, the number of oil tests, it's not new. Oil test is, is not novel. Even when we have economic boom or oil boom, we still have oil tests. There is no well, yeah, I don't think there is any point in time we never had oil tests in this country. But the nature problem, yes, if I go into that, that's why a lot of us are clamoring for diversification of the economy. So we have a government that is landing the morale of policies and issues. You can imagine the NPL issues, and uh, 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 what are these phones, uh, what are they called again? Network. They are talking about increasing status and so on. In other words, you want to deprive the masses of necessities and give luxuries to the to the rich. The truth about this is that the government is at key on what to do with the economy. And this is as a result of a moral in leadership activity. Completely headless, rudderless. There is a lot of sex in the system, a whole lot of sex. You can imagine from our country talking of uh, how many billions. You can imagine Baba Shawa, who today without any compunction is coming out to talk of the Muslim Muslim people or Christian Christian people. Somebody that is supposed to be languishing in jail. And you know, there is a lot of issues. And so one, whenever there is a slight problem in the oil sector, the government becomes guilty because it has no idea, no sense, no motivation. It cannot think outside the box on how to address the economic issues in this country. It is not so on oil. And even in the oil sector, you ask a new group in the oil sector, when the refineries are not working, that would have mitigated the debt in the oil sector. You export the crude and import the refined products. This is highly ridiculous. Okay. So, when it's a slight problem in that sector, we have a great impact on the economy and on the earnings uh, of the federal government. Mm. That is the truth about it. That is what every government says or says. Apart from the issue of the criminals, breaking pipelines and so on, which is what is being accentuated by most government. You have those in government that are involved in this sleazy deals. 
and are being protected by the same government. The other cabal. Talk of fun around the general. What does that mean to the fun around the general? Every time money is posted for fun around the general, and nothing is being the same. Who pays the fun around the general? The government. Who nominates the government? At the end of the day, you're, you're maintaining your capital refinery that are not working, that are more important. Is that itself not there? And billions of voters. How would that have a negative impact on the economy and, 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 and the proceeds from the oil? So, even if you talk of the LNPC, you say the refineries are not working. Yet you have how many people working in that in this in this in energy that receive salaries and emoluments and so on? What are you going to discuss say to the how can you describe that? So it all boils down to leadership. They just keep talking of all oh, the other guys are talking of where people break the five plan. Yes, we all condemn that. Those things are respect. But the truth about it is that that might have just 10 percent effect, negative effect on the economy. It cannot be compared to the fraud in the system. In terms of the turnaround, in terms of exportation of food in unfinished products, in terms of salaries, and what have you. So the federal government to just throw his mouth, I wanted to use another hard word. <laughs> Well, so well, I mean, you just probably answer the next question. So it means that you agree with, you know, the experts who have said that the government needs to cut oil theft and also um, cut recurrent expenditure to avoid bankruptcy. Uh, you probably agree with this expert, and that's it. But let's see how all of this I pans out. I well, so I said you probably answered the question, the next question that would have, uh, you know, come from me. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That, okay. Uh, okay. Because experts are saying that the government needs to cut on recurrent expenditure and also cut oil theft in order to avoid the economy. That's when will the serving minister move with in an example of over 10 cars? How many days? And why? What are you going to do? The president leaves the country every month, or every two months. Or my brother is a person. For what? He has the a a woman's daughter getting married in the day. Is there? You have a commissioner's son getting married in the year ago. Is there? If somebody invites him to meet me, it's on the streets. I I strongly believe you will call the president. Because so if you are not invited, but let him have a coffee. You invite him to the house to talk about the coffee. It's good traffic. Why his nation is on fire. You are building a railway to the jail. And you talk of the economy. What is the economy therapy? Initially, they came up with all kinds of excuses until Mr. President, in his few days' sleep, exposed the very reason for which it was the railway that he built. He said his relatives are in the jail. In public, he said, I mean, he said it in public. Now he's released how many billions of dollars for the purchase of cars for people in the jail. Right. Yeah, let's, let's, let's move on from that now. Sorry to interject, but um, I really want, because of time, we want to move on to a couple of other stories from other papers. And you've raised all the important questions, you know, about, about the situation uh, as far as the president is concerned. But, but another one uh, is on the front page of The Guardian. Uh, it's something I'm sure interests you because you are an agile Delta man uh, to the core. Um, uh, unionists are asking the president to... To, uh, to be quick in, in his um, forensic audit so that he can inaugurate the board of the NDDC. It's on the front page, the top uh, of that front page 
often the guardian this morning. You know, they're saying that unionists are asking the president Mohamed Buhari to quickly uh, be done with the forensic audit so that uh, he can inaugurate the board of the NDDC. What does it say? The fact that at this time we still don't have a, a substantive board for such a very important commission. I believe there was no uh, aim of inaugurating that board. How long does it take to admit the matter with the policy of the state? That is only a premium policy of one of the soft topics. Uh, so the issue of policy, where will you get it on the radio? Is that an interest? Who is that interested in all this? And the NDC itself is a force. I am one of those that concerns the shutting up of the NDC. With the, alongside the Ministry of uh, Niger Delta, I said, look, these things are just used. They are like stalking horses. They are used to deceive the Niger Delta. Pretending that it is the issue, while the national part, they are not. They are not going to get a contract on any of you, they are not going to get a contract from the presidency. That is number one. So they still decide who gets the job in any of which has not to be. Number two, what is the importance of NDDC and uh, having NDDC and Minister of Mega Delta Affairs? Public waste of resources. You don't need to do. What is Mega Delta Affairs do? If either you have NDDC or you have Mega Delta Affairs, Minister of Mega Delta Affairs, you don't need to do for it. You don't need to do for it. You need the issue of America, taking it from unfinal care, it is the most complete of medicine. It is not in the American that will attend the issue. So, the assessment of the NDDC, the NDDC was there before I got that out of the ministry. All you need to do is empower the NDDC to carry out the job of addressing the plight of the United States. What is the United States? If there is no money in the country, what is there? There is no money in the country. You have an identity of you are paying that for that, you have a budget and so on. You that money and it's the all cut energy and cut as an identity of energy properly. And I love it all. Most times they are paying their coins. So you have the major government there as the envy. But you don't get a profit. I'm sure I want to tell you in Asuro. It is what the man in other words says that the the entity will do. So as far as I'm concerned, the whole thing is just like a floor. They will say the boss of the exaggerated board. So we know why would they not break the board? They are in control, but they take what happens there. So this is the point is that the issue of work is because it's a legal matter. It's a legal requirement. But those in power are not interested. What's the truth about it? The NDC is thinking about my problem. Sadly, you also have Niger Delta uh, people that are also complicitors, that also help to defraud the Niger Delta. How long are we going to have the NDC? What is the impact? There is no impact whatsoever in the Niger Delta. No! So, is the is a fight for a black out. People go there to collect contracts, they don't even execute. When you go there, they are trying to appear, you collapse on the floor of the house. You pretend to collapse on the floor of the house. What has happened? I believe those things, my dear brother and sister. All right, open a bar, Katara, quickly. It feels like uh, we are really. Uh, in the time where there's a lot of economic crisis or we're just faced with it. 140 days after, federal government loses $3 billion to halt at Kaduna Abuja train service. And that's on the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, what do you make of this situation? I mean, we seem to be, uh, you know, on the other hand, we're losing out, but you also need to consider the issue of security. So he said the federal government is moving as a result of the Kaduna train, is that what you're saying? Yes, so the services of the Abuja Kaduna train has been halted for about 100, or well, was halted about 140 days, and we have lost 300 billion naira on that. And you have a report also saying that 600 million, uh, 3 billion, I beg your pardon, 
600 million also total loss in the last four months since the train services were suspended. Sorry, in synopsis, what you said was because it has been halted, the federal government is losing revenue, isn't it? Yes, it's been halted. So, first of all, it, it's really sad that we're losing money. But on the other hand, you also yeah. need to think about security. Okay. And first of all, uh, like I said, you know, it's like a drowning man trying to hold on to anything. Before the railway, how are we making our money? Yes, people will have you invested, so there has to be a return. So that's about that. But uh, that is what you can more or less refer to as the first major. And who is to blame? The federal government. I just thought my job because uh, it could say it is a natural thing. Although the, the federal government could take part of the blame for not providing enough security. But let us make that. I mean, probably it doesn't have the gift of care for us. It is that you have said, I mean, for what? But then, people are still in captivity. So it will be callous for you to resume on that railway. It will be extremely insensitive. More so, this is also by the point that the federal government has not shown any form of interest. The federal government is not even interested in the release of those in captivity. And so people are angry. And they are sworn, as if today they resume uh, the train, whatever, the Kaduna Abuja. I tell you that Nigeria, this time, not will not uh, adopt us. Nigerians will go and bomb down that case. I don't I don't think it'll be fair. Open up one I don't I don't think it'll be fair to say the federal government is not interested in any way in in securing the release of these uh, um AK AK nine train kidnap victim because la, la, I, I'm sure I'm sure you no sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir please let me just uh, put it out no no I, I want to put something out there to be to so as, as a basis for what I'm saying because last week a guy by who put out a statement you know he, he had an interview with BBC house detailing you know at length what the federal government had done they had acceded to some demands of the terror, terror leader of those terrorists um, got some of their members who were in prison uh, got their their wives and their children, even went to Adamawa where they were in jail, where the kids and the wives were in detention, to fly them by by plane go, go. and give them go. give them to the to the terrorists. And terrorists said no. Now after you've given us all we want, give us money. So at least they, they've done okay. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, is what, is what I refer to as high blood pressure of researching veterans and an enemy of concrete performance. Walk the talk. Stop telling me. You know why people started breaking the pipelines? I drove the Niger Delta issue, so it's in the pipeline. I drove the Niger Delta issue, so it's in the pipeline. They started breaking the pipes to see if they are going to see the problem, the solution is there. Right? We are not interested. Nigerians are not interested in what you do. They are interested in results and not rhetoric. So stop the rhetoric and let us see uh, 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 something concrete, evidence. I can get up in the morning to say, okay, I'm seriously working on you, going to do your PhD in America, going to do your PhD in Harvard, going to do it. I could be deceiving you. But until I get your official paper and give you proof of payment, your fees payment, then you know that I'm working. So we're not interested. Mention one uh, uh, man that has been kidnapped, that has been released by the Sabbath. No. So, as far as I said, I can say you're not working. Look at the issue of the money. Now, when Zena was, uh, was arrested and convicted in Saudi Arabia, she was to face the death penalty. We are not ordered their commissariat to intervene. They said, no, they will not intervene. 
that is the policy of the government. You see, we have a government that has a schizophrenic personality on issues. So the federal government is not fucking. They are just deceiving Nigeria. How many of them are you? One of the children girls. No, so please don't be deluded by those records of uh, um, uh, the federal government spokesman <laughs> from Line Mohammed in Show Mustafa or or whatever they're doing <laughs> All right. I, I mean, you say that shouldn't be deluded. I'm just putting the facts out there for you to comment on. I mean, it's not, there's nothing delusional <laughs> about it. But um, let's, let's dovetail because you've raised the query matter issue. On the front page of a nation, uh, Ohanese, the paper reports are asking the federal government to wade into the query matter case in, on a diplomatic level, I'm sure. Uh, so just uh, speak, speak on that for, for a bit, please. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so sad. I'm really saying because what the government is doing is what any father will do. Not just any father, any compassionate being will do. The risk agreement, he must probably would have set the family because they were supposed to set the boy's kidney three now within March. He said, You have to go back to Nigeria because if anything had even happened to the boy in London, the boy in London would have been the first life. People say to forget the past. So they say you have to go back. But the boy told me what you advise. So oh, you have the opportunity now. So why are you coming back? And I tell you, then there, God has blessed you. Be not pasture. It's a real advice, and he did what he did. No problem. The facts are there. The have what to do is not the good of who was officially and so on. Now we are not saying because the British law will take his cause. Here, yeah, there is no huge sentiment. There is no law for the rich and for the poor. Everybody is just poor in the eyes of the law. What we are saying is, okay, fine. This was not, this was done for intensely good reasons. No ill motive. Mr. President, use your diplomatic channels to help this man out. He's going through a lot, psychologically, emotionally. He's thinking of his daughter, the health of his daughter. Then again, he's faced between freedom, liberty, and jail. The man is going through a lot. In fact, I distinguish maybe he has psychological problems right now. Because he's human and he's supposed to be human. So let's stop the government from saying let us intervene. If, even if he wasn't a deputy Senate president, he's a Nigerian first and foremost. What stops the government from doing? Let us intervene. Is that as if, excuse me, he went there and committed a crime such as murder, stealing, terrorism? No. A man trying to save his daughter's life. A man believed he went through the world. Well, I think there's a procedural breach. Not a Nigerian procedural breach. In London, go back to So, why are you so for the campaign? That's why I said, but when Dana committed fraud, selling of drugs and so on, in Saudi Arabia, Mr. President, all that I can get out of the Now, you see where for the matter. You see where they put up marital segregation and change discrimination in this country. You have the president whose niche is dripping with words of, in the words of, as if like in words of nullification and interposition. In one breath you say one thing, in another breath you say another thing. Because it's never a matter of Now you tell me how the South Africa will be. They have been involved in drug kids, high drugs. The first death penalty is that you have to get involved. Life is equal to the matter. You say it's the product of that policy, not to get involved. What did he do? They you say it's not that He wrote officially. You will grant it. Why not do for this? All right. All right. Okay. Uh, well, I, I was probably going to show your thoughts on this one, but we've been prompted to, you know, to call it a wrap right here. Thank you so much. Okunaba and Katara for being part of the breakfast. We appreciate your thoughts and all of the ins insights you've brought this morning uh, to the big stories on the front pages. Yes, Okunabo, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. We appreciate your time. We wish we had time to ask you about the uh, the gale of defections in, in your state, River State, and whether you're also pl planning to join the train. But maybe we'll talk about that some some, <laughs> some other day. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you saw your good friend uh, Chris Feinborn uh, as well. Uh, who's next? <laughs> I'll be surprised to see you. <laughs> I won't be so I won't be surprised to see you on the front. <laughs> well, that's the size of it. We need to go now. Thank you so much. Open up on Qatar. All right. Well, that's the size of it on the front pages of National Daily. So we take a break when we return. The conversation continues right here. Stay with us. <laughs>